Great. So thank you, uh, everyone, so much for joining us today. This is Brad uh, from Dentainment. And the webinar today is going to be focusing on 32 online marketing tips for dentists. And the whole point of this is to kind of go over the trends uh, right now, what platforms are most important. We're going to touch on Facebook advertising, what type of, what type of uh, messaging you should be posting every day. And at the end, we'll recap with any uh, questions. So the first first tip of the day is basically implement social media. Um, you know, at the end of the day, word of mouth is always going to be the number one form of new patient flow, whether you're a dental office, a pizza place, a hotel, whatever it may be. So we want to encourage offices to use these platforms because it just allows for scalable word of mouth, right? And your patients that you want to connect with are already on these platforms. If you're a pediatric office, maybe they're on Instagram, maybe, uh, you know, obviously everyone's on Facebook. So regardless of what type of office you have, there's numerous channels to be able to reach your target demographic. So basically just get started on these platforms. Uh, the second one is choose your social media channels wisely. Right. If your office doesn't have the bandwidth or the wherewithal at the office to manage every single platform, maybe you just want to have like the best Facebook page, which is really game changing and cool. Um, if you see that a lot of your competition is already, you know, really posting every day on Facebook, maybe you want to do that, but also have the best YouTube channel with oral health tips and um you know, video testimonials. So choose your channels wisely. You don't have to be on every single social media media platform. You want to just, uh, what, whatever is most appropriate and comfortable for your team, jump on those. The third one is identify the perfect online voice. So if you want to be an expert on all on four dental implants, your video content, your blogging content, your images, your all the topics you post should be about that. You know, um, if you're a pediatric office and you want to talk about the importance of, you know, brushing and flossing and eating the right foods, make sure your content is appropriate for that. Okay, so what is your what is your voice? What are your goals? And then make sure your content strategy really, really matches that. The fourth one is write good dental content. I mean, that's the key. So content is king at the end of the day. So the key to this is really having a content strategy in place. So today is President's Day. If you want to post something for, for the holiday, obviously that's great. You know, Valentine's Day, there's National Cheese Pizza Day. Every day of the week, there's something to post about in terms of a holiday or a trend. But I, I want to stress that the, the key should not be selling dentistry every day. Maybe that's 20% of your content strategy. 80% of it, give or take, should be fun, personable things from the office. If there's a team birthday, if you guys go out for lunch, uh, maybe before and after pictures, whatever it is, you know, quality content literally never goes out of style, okay? Uh, the fifth one is be consistent. You know, this is kind of like showering. You need to do it every single day, right? So um, the only way to engage your audience is basically to connect, right? So the key to this is keeping your message strong and consistent on a daily basis, right? Posting once every few months on Facebook is not going to do anything. We recommend a daily posting on Facebook if that's too much for you, maybe once or twice a week. But definitely, you know, posting one really quality posting on Facebook every day is totally cool as long as it's engaging and not selling something every day. But if, as long as you're um, putting up entertaining and engaging content, that's key. The sixth one is choose the best keywords, whether it's your dental website or social media campaign. You know, I just kind of briefly mentioned this uh, with the perfect online voice. But if you are going for, let's say, all on for dental implants, make sure your website has those keyword search terms on it. Make sure your social media campaign is using the appropriate hashtags, right? If you are in Sacramento, maybe you want to use the hashtag Sacramento so you're a part of the conversation in Sacramento, right? The content should not just be about your dental office. It should be about events going on in Sacramento. So really be specific on the conversation you want to be a part of. Uh, seventh is add more keywords uh, to reach long tail searches. So let's say, you know, everyone, you know, wants to do cosmetic dentistry, but let's say you want to be a, a specialist in uh, sleep apnea, right? Uh, and that's your focus. Maybe you want to offer some sleep apnea services at the office, which is fantastic. Make sure to have a really content rich page on your website that talks about sleep apnea. Maybe do a YouTube video of you talking about the procedure at the office. Make sure to use keywords, tags, descriptions, um, make, because you want that not only to be found by search engines, but you want to be able to share that unique URL on social media, right? Not just your homepage. You want to link to that sleep apnea page as much as possible. So if you are going for some long tail searches, which is always a good idea, um, 
make sure you have really the content on your website to be found. Uh, the eighth one is use images in social media. You know, uh, the statistics are mind-boggling how much more reach and engagement a Facebook post gets with a good quality image. So always, always, always try to make your post visually appealing. This is obvious at this point. And just think that your post is going to be seen on a mobile phone. Right? Most of these posts, on, especially on social media, is going to be shown on, uh, people are going to see this on their mobile phone. So how will this pop off someone's timeline on their mobile phone? Right? Um, and the old, you know, a picture worth being a thousand words has never been more relevant today. Images are super, super powerful, and they could tell a complete story. You know, I don't know if all, uh, everyone listening here is on Instagram, but Instagram is an amazing platform. Um, primarily is if you just take a picture at the office and you throw it through one of the filters on Instagram, it's going to look like Ansel Adams shot the thing, right? So even if you don't have the most amazing picture, throw it through a filter on Instagram, and then you could share that picture on Facebook and have a very, very nice aesthetic to it and uh, really will pop on someone's uh, timeline. Uh, the ninth one is add video to social media. Video is considered the heaviest form of multimedia content. Okay? Google owns YouTube, so anytime you up optimize and upload videos to YouTube, it's absolutely game-changing. Video is a beautiful way to tell the story about your office. Um, there's other platforms, you know, Vine, Instagram, that you could use some shorter video formats with, but video is really, really cool on Facebook as well. I mean, there's a lot of power in video advertising on Facebook. Really pops off timelines and tr tremendously impactful for a dental office. Um, so there's a, we could do a whole two-hour talk just on videos, but just some simple tips on video is I recommend holding the camera horizontally. You know, if you do it vertically, that's fine. I still like to hold it horizontally so it kind of looks a little widescreen. If you're, let's say you're doing a, a patient testimonial at the office, make sure to choose a setting that just looks like a dental vibe. I got a video a couple weeks ago from a, a, an office sent us a video and they're like, yeah, please upload this video testimonial from a patient. And it was the most awkward video ever. It was like a woman in her bedroom on a webcam. And I was like, I am not uploading that to the internet. So make sure if you're doing these testimonials, maybe you want to film someone in front of your logo. If you have an operatory that's not being used, turn that into the, like your little set, right? So you don't have to think about it. If someone wants to do a video, boom, you go right in there. The lighting's good. It's not too loud. And you just crank out a video. Make sure your receptionist has the best smartphone po uh, possible, right? So... Any dentist here on the call listening, I highly encourage you to get your receptionist the best phone possible, right? So that way you know your content looks beautiful. Most people do have an amazing phone these days, but make sure you're recording with the highest quality camera phone possible. And additionally, um, don't worry about the videos being perfect. right? It's not supposed to look like Spielberg shot this thing. So I know a little imperfection is actually really cool because it's believable. Okay, if it, there's a little noise in the background and someone laughing and you can hear a drill or something, that's fine. Right? That's fine. It's believable. It's the, the ones where the whole crews are there and the lighting and the editing and the sound, those advertisements, they're kind of like, well, these are like set up, they're edited. You know, the ones you crank out on your cell phone every day are just as powerful and you can do those all the time on the fly. You don't have to hire people and bring them in and everything. So video is absolutely game changing. I can't stress enough how important it is to add video to your social media campaign. Uh, the tenth one is don't forget to use hashtags. We definitely talked about this, but once again, um, be part of the trends, be part of the conversations that you want to uh, um, just hat, latch on to those search terms, whether it's implant, whether it's a holiday. Be very um, uh, conscious of the hashtags you're using. Uh, the eleventh uh, tip is share content. Don't just create it, right? So you always don't have to come up with something genius and creative to post on Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn every day. People in your community, the dental community, posting amazing stuff every day. Maybe you just want to share something, right? So let's say you're in Sacramento. I believe yeah, someone's on the call from Sacramento. And it's Friday afternoon, and there's a really cool event in downtown Sacramento at a yoga studio, right? Well, why can't you share that on your Facebook page and say, have a wonderful time at the event and enjoy your weekend, Sacramento? Right? It, it doesn't have to be original, genius content every second. So see what's going on in the community, engage with the community. Social media is very reciprocal, so if you're sharing events on their page, there will be some good interaction and engagement with that. So don't think you have to, to post something original and genius every day, share content. 
The 12th one is, this is the same thing pretty much as listen to social media followers. You know, check your mentions on Twitter. If someone thanks you on Facebook for the great experience today at the office, you know, comment back, thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you in six months for your next visit. So make sure to listen to people on social media. Uh, the 13th one is keep the social in social media, right? I like to say have a dinner party vibe mentality, right? So it can't be all about we're the best dental office, come in for Invisalign. We're the best dental office, come in for implants. It should be more, this is the experience, you know, this is what's happening today at the office. Or, you know, we went out for sushi last night and this is our team celebrating. Fun things. You got to keep the content social on social media. 14th one, and I'm going to crank through the rest of these, okay, guys? So the 14th one is build trust through social media. Um, you know, social media at the end of the day is all about um, building your your personality and your brand so when people are shopping around for an office they go to your Facebook page they go to your Twitter they go to your Pinterest and they go wow this office seems so friendly I love the vibe of this office people are laughing people are smiling I, I, I there's rapport there's credibility um, so that should be the intention of your social media campaign is to be transparent and show people the vibe the personality of your team of your office Right. And um, it, it, I just can't stress enough. It's not about selling dentistry. It's really about engaging with your patients. Uh, the 15th one is find influencers to help share dental content. Um, you know, while you're working on building trust and becoming an influencer, find other influencers and you know, help them maybe share the content for you. So uh, this is a whole different talk. But basically, if you could get um, members in the community, whether it's uh, media or people with a lot of followers to kind of share some stuff for you, um, the more the merrier for, for engagement and reach. Uh, the sixth one is obviously monitor your, your your brand. Obviously, any Twitter mentions that come through, Facebook likes, notifications, you want to be on this stuff. Facebook messages, right? I can't tell you how many times we'll take on a new Facebook page from an office and we'll look and there's like tons of messages that haven't been responded to or comments. You really need to have someone at the office Get these notifications. It could be on the weekend. It could be in the middle of the night. Obviously, you don't have to respond that second, but make sure you're really on top of the messages that come through. Uh, the second one is obviously uh, reviews are uh, really powerful. That's a whole other talk, but Google reviews are absolutely game changing for organic search engine search engine optimization, page rank, branding, very important stuff. Uh, by the way, I know I'm going, going through these pretty fast. So if anyone wants me to email this to them, uh, I'll give you my email at the end, and I'm more than happy to share this with you. Uh, the 18th one is use email to complement your dental uh, social media campaign. Email is a great thing, right? If you're using Solution Reach or another one of these fantastic software programs for, for patient outreach, send out a newsletter once every couple months, right? And it always doesn't have to. Let's say you want to do. Let's say you want to do some selling. Let's say you're having an Invisalign special at the office. Maybe lead with some type of holiday fun post or a social media content post. And then under that, oh, by the way, we're running an Invisalign special this month, right? Um, you should beta test your email campaigns to see what kind of open rates and cam campaigns are working effectively for your, for your area, for your office, because I can tell you everyone's going to be different. But um, you want to make sure it's not always just selling dentistry and always have a call to action at the, at the end of it. And the 19th one is uh, keep your email and social media marketing uh, current, obviously. You want to have messages that are relatable today, not old school. You want to make sure when someone goes to your Facebook page, the post, the last post wasn't from a year and a half ago, right? So you want to make sure at least there's some fresh content hitting your pages. Uh, you want to have social media icons on your website, right? So when potential patients go to your website, they go, oh, wow, this office is on Instagram. They must have the latest technology at the office. So if you are on these platforms, make sure they're on the top of your homepage, not only for, for, for branding, but also so your patients can connect with you on these platforms, right? Because you're changing people's lives. You're giving them a smile. You're giving them oral health. They want to share the message for you. They want to help you engage. At the end of the day, all this social media marketing stuff, the, the intention of it is to turn your existing patients into ambassadors for the practice. Right. So simple Facebook likes are so powerful because then you could go back and target their friends and family members in the area of the office on ads if you want to. But even then, they're engaged with your page. So likes, followers, check ins. I mean, we're going to get to a bunch of stuff here in a second, but just getting your patients engaged in your campaign is, a, is the easiest way to turn them into ambassadors for the practice. All right, we're, we're cranking through here. The 20th one is understand online behavior of dental patients. You need to understand 
kind of what's working for your practice. So Google Analytics is a wonderful thing um, to put on your website and go, oh, wow, like 80% of our traffic this month came from Facebook or 3% of our traffic came from Angie's List. I'd even even heard of that website before. You know, so your offices are completely different from one another. So you really have to put up some, some, some analytics and metrics to figure out what's working. Right? I'm not insisting you need 9,000 different call tracking numbers, but make sure you know what's working. And at the end of the day, if someone calls the office and they're like, I, you know, I found you on the internet, you don't want to annoy them. But if there's any way to be like, was, was it on Google or you know, was it on Facebook? If there's any way you could dig a little deeper without being uh, obnoxious, that would be great. Because if you can get the data and the analytics of what's working for your office, it's gold because then you just focus on that more. Uh, 21st uh, tip is create specialized messages for different op audiences. So let's say you're a pretty big practice and you're doing you're doing you know Invisalign for teens, but you're also focusing on all on for dental implants for an older demographic. You could run different campaigns, whether it's Facebook ads, you could create an ad uh, and boost and promote a post that targets teens or parents with uh, children. Let's say you want to do some more to all on for dental implants. Maybe your demographic skewing 45 and all up. Maybe you could target and add uh, males in a 10-mile radius of the office that are CEOs, for instance, right? So your content, especially when you're doing Facebook advertising, when you're doing uh, AdWords, you could create different campaigns and messages for different audience. So that's a whole different thing to delve into, uh, but just, just realize you're going to have a, a different reach on certain type of content. Uh, the second one is design a well-balanced dental website that is mobile responsive. Obviously, uh, it's hugely important here for any office to have a mobile, re mobile responsive website. There's some amazing companies out there right now. Uh, contact your web designer. Just ask them to do a mobile responsive website. Very, very important. Um, it's, it's massive to have a, a mobile responsive website, obviously. Uh, 23rd one is design a dental website that engages dental patients. Um, I can't tell you how many times, uh, you know, I had a, a call with an amazing office last week about this. You go to the office and... You walk in, it literally feels like the Ritz-Carlton. It is gorgeous. I mean, it is beautiful, beautiful office. The website is just lame, right? So make sure your website is up to par, if not even cooler, than your dental office, right? So really put the time and energy to thinking about the color palette you're using, Hopefully you have a logo, the layout, the images, the functionality, how they can contact you, all these things. But really have a website you know, that's clean, minimalistic, and modern um, that uses some really nice typeface. Super, super important. Um, highly encourage you to, 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 to make sure your website's in order. Uh, the 24th one is learn how to distribute dental content wisely. Um, there are some, some tools out there to help you distributing content. You know, Facebook's great right now because you could schedule posts, but if you want to put, tie everything into one, you know, Hootsuite's a nice um, social media management platform, there's Sprout Social, there's a few other uh, real good ones out there um, that you could schedule tweets, you know, yesterday's Valentine's Day, so if you don't want to deal with, you know, posting on the weekend or whatever, you could schedule stuff, so if you have any questions on tools to use, I'm more than happy to obviously send you ideas, but um, you could bring everything into a, into a dashboard and just kind of Put your t tweets out, your Facebook postings, and everything under one, one umbrella. Uh, explore the power of Facebook advertising. It's the 25th tip. Um, super, super powerful stuff. Uh, maybe some of you are realizing now when you post something on Facebook, you're not getting a lot of organic reach on your page. Um, and I encourage you to experiment with some Facebook advertising. In terms of budget, in terms of which type of ROI you're going for, this is different for every office it really is. Um, but our favorite type of Facebook advertising is boosting and promoting posts. So let's say you just post something like a really nice smile quote today for, you know, it's uh, early in the week. You want to post a nice quote, uh, you know, a nice smile quote with your logo on it. And you'll post that. Maybe you'll get a handful, maybe a dozen likes or something like that. If you boost and promote that, you could reach uh, a considerably larger audience and get way more engagement and, and, and likes on it. So um, this is a whole different, we could do a five hour webinar on just Facebook advertising, but I'm a huge fan of it. Obviously lots of people are, um, and it's very, very powerful. Um, so try it. Targeting on Facebook is incredible. If you want to target parents in a five mile radius of the office, that like um, 
traveling and shopping that also have kids, you could target that way. So the uh, it's super, super uh, powerful, and uh, I'm sure uh, you would like it. No pun intended. <laughs> okay. The 26th one is create a dental blog worth reading. Blogging is very, very powerful. Uh, blogging is also called inbound marketing, right? So if you start blogging, um, make sure it's obviously unique content. Maybe talk about services at the office. You could talk about uh, a, a whole smile makeover case you did. Um, you want to use inbound and outbound links. There is an art form to blogging. There's some amazing tools out there. Uh, obviously, YouTube, you know, do a search on blog writing tips. This is changing a lot, so just make sure um, whenever you're listening to this, you're up to speed on the appropriate web you know, mono words, whether it's six to 800 words, how many links you should use. So I don't want to give too much specific information now because it's really changing a lot, but who's ever doing the blog writing for you, just make sure they're, they're really on kind of the most effective way to do it. 27th is consider the length of dental posts, like I just stated. Um, maybe you want to do shorter posts because the, they're going to get read more, but the longer ones might be better for organic search engine optimization. So um, it really kind of just depends on what you're writing about, right? Um, the, the, the best length for web pages depends on the content provided and the way you format it. So like I said, again, just make sure you're doing some homework on that. Uh, the 28th one is maybe you want to guest blog and comment on other websites. So let's say there's, a, a, you know, in Sacramento, there's a, a great uh, blog talking about events and everything happening in the city. Maybe you want to comment on their uh, blog about events. Maybe there's a health uh, blog in the area that you want to comment on and provide some oral health tips. Um, World Oral Health Day is coming up. Maybe you want to reach out to some, some blogs that are covering that and, and, and link back to your website there. So commenting on other blogs is really powerful. Doesn't take that much time, and, and it's actually really fun, and you learn a lot about it, uh, other events. Uh, 29th is read what other dentists are writing about. So if you if you have no idea what to post today, maybe you want to do a search uh, for other offices that you you like the vibe of what they're talking about, and, and you know President's Day or you know there's a holiday this week. What do we talk about? There's always a tie-in for den uh, for for dentistry. So for President's Day, maybe it was like which president had the best smile or uh, you know, trivia related to the holidays. Um, holidays are really, really powerful, and I'm not sure I have this on one of these tips, but um, if you'd like a holiday calendar, you can email me, and I'm gonna put my email here, here in a second. Um, there's literally National Sushi Day. There's National Meatball Day coming up. You know, for National Meatball Day, maybe you wanna go down the street to your favorite Italian restaurant with the team for lunch, have a great lunch, take some pictures of you. When you get back to the office, you want to post that picture of you at your favorite Italian restaurant down the street, tag the local restaurant, thank them for being your favorite restaurant in town. Maybe they'll like and share your comment on Facebook. That's really fun post. You want to, you know, hashtag national meatball day. And on top of that, maybe you want to blow up one of those pictures into an eight by 10 with the team sitting there enjoying lunch. Write it in a Sharpie, you know, thank you for being our favorite restaurant in town. We love you, you know, Sacramento Dental Care, whatever the name of your office is. Next time you go to that restaurant, give the manager or the owner of that place the picture. And you never know, once in a while they'll put that picture up on the wall. And it's obviously great for them and it's free advertising for your dental office. So, all right, that's pretty random, but I'm going to get on with this. Uh, 30th is a uh, general interest topic. So just make sure you're obviously up to speed on kind of what's trending in the world in dentistry. Maybe there's a, an amazing new app out there or a really cool new uh, toothbrush. Uh, so anything trending in the world in dentistry, maybe you want to post that type of content. Uh, 31, this is the biggest no-brainer in the history of marketing. You need to encourage your patients to check in at the office, right? So have a check-in sign in the reception area that says check in on one of these platforms. So most of your check-ins are going to be on Facebook. It's so easy. All you do is put the, the check-in sign in the reception area, and it's like free word-of-mouth branding for your office. Such a no-brainer. If you'd like a check-in sign, I'm more than happy to email you one. We don't have to be working together. You can just send me your logo, um, your call on what time of prize or anything you want to do. But encouraging patients to check in at the office is literally the biggest no-brainer because it's free, scalable word-of-mouth right there, and they're telling all their friends they're at your office. All right, 32nd is have fun. That's the key to this whole thing. These social media initiatives should be fun for your entire dental team. You want to bring a sense of joy, humor, and lightness to all of your creative decision, decisions and postings. This should really be a fun thing. It shouldn't be like, oh, we have to post this week. It should be, what are we posting this week? And really inspire your team to be part of it. Um, that's it. Oh, we got one more. Um, 
the bonus tip is roll out the red carpet for all of your patients, right? Right now in the digital area era, dentistry is your product, but you are in the business of the dental patient experience. So um, just wow all your patients, have fun. If you guys do have any follow-up questions with this, you can email me, uh, the email is info at dentainment.com. It's D-E-N-T-A-I-N-M-E-N-T.com. And um, thank you so much for joining us uh, today. Have an amazing afternoon. And then I'm going to get to these questions right now and uh, answer any other questions you have. Thanks again.